Bonjour, students. Hope you all are well today. Um, we're going to talk about your art supply kits and what's in them. So you should see a little note from me and a little student contract area down here. You should also have gotten an artist of the day card. If you don't know what these are, these cards are cards that I give out when my students are doing something amazing or kind in the class. And this means you get to line up first. Um, if there's any incentives in your homerooms, if you show this to your teacher, usually you'll get like a clip up if you're in kindergarten or maybe a dojo point. Um, this is that proof, okay? So I pass these out because since I'm not gonna see you in person, as far as I know, that could change. But um, I thought I would give everyone just to start the school year off right. Now, if you really love these and you've been collecting them, at the dollar store, you can find frames that fit these perfectly and you can frame them and put them in your room or anywhere else around the house, okay? All right, um, another thing that you should have in your kit are oil pastels. I love oil pastels. They're soft, they're creamy, they're oily. They're really fun to draw with. Um, so I'm gonna be showing you a variety of oil pastel techniques for you all to work with um, during remote learning. Um, remember, the difference between oil pastels and crayons is that oil pastels stain and they use oil in them and, um, and crayon uses wax. So crayon is harder, won't stain. Oil pastel is softer and it will stain, okay? All right, model magic. I know this is not a good substitute for clay because nothing replaces clay. Clay is so fun to work with, and I can't wait till you all are back in the classroom so we can work with clay again and use the kiln to fire them and then glaze them and then fire them again, and you have a gorgeous piece that you can bring home. But in the meantime, we're gonna have to be using things like model magic to do sculpture since you guys don't have kilns at home, okay? Um, you should have a straw. Okay, you should have a little straw. Um, we're gonna do a variety of things with this. So after you use it the first time, don't throw it away, but your lips are the only lips that should go on this straw. And, um, and so make sure you keep this straw. If for some reason you forget and you throw it away, it's pretty easy to get a straw at a restaurant these days, um, whether you're doing drive-through or takeout or whatever, okay? Um, you should have three different types of brushes in your kit. You should have a really nice fine tip brush for doing little details, okay? You should have a nice big fat brush for covering large areas. And you should have a medium sized brush that comes with your watercolor kit. Um, so your watercolor kit, remember when you're using watercolors, you always want to rinse your brush between colors so that all the colors remain the color that they originally were. Okay. If you start mixing all the colors in the palette, then you're going to end up with some really muddy colors and maybe just brown, 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 brown. Okay. Um, so rinse your brush between colors. Also, all of you probably remember me talking about having a good hair day with your brush. That means that when you're using your brush, you're being soft and gentle and treating your brush kindly. Okay. So that it stays, um, it stays nice and beautiful and lasts a lot longer. Okay. All right, another thing you'll find in your kit is a waterproof pen. And um, I love these waterproof pens 
They're actually one of my favorite things to draw with. I drew with them a lot this summer. And the cool thing about these is it doesn't matter if you put watercolor over them, they will not dissolve, okay? And um, when you put watercolor over your drawing, you'll still see the pen. Another thing you should have in your kit is a Sharpie. Okay, Sharpies are waterproof as well. You can draw with them. You can also put watercolor over them and still gonna stay, okay? You should also have two pieces of drawing paper in your kit. This is called Bristol paper. It's um, acid free, which means that um, the paper is not going to change color over long periods of time. Watercolor paper, you're gonna find two pieces of watercolor paper. You're gonna know that they're watercolor paper because when you touch them, they've got a, a kind of a textured feeling, okay? Remember, texture is the way something feels. So it's gonna be a little bumpy. You're also gonna find that your watercolor paper is a little bit thicker than your drawing paper, okay? Now, I wish I could have given you more paper, but these kits would have been so heavy if I had put the amount of paper I wanted to put in them. So um, let's talk about, you, you just found out everything that you're going to get in your supply kit, okay? And some of you might be watching this and you already have your supply kits because you're watching it after Monday night. And some of you might be watching this before Monday night and you don't have your supply kit yet but you, now you know what goes in them, okay? We're gonna talk about personal supply kits. Now, personal supply kits are going to be supply kits that you put together, so that's kind of fun. What I want you to do for your personal supply kit is I want you to take either a box or a plastic container or a bag and I want you to start gathering items around your house that you can use for art making okay now you might have some or all of the things that I have in the personal art kit that I made um, you can use pretty much anything to make art and that's what's so awesome about art Art can be combined with any subject area and it can be made with any materials. You can be an artist no matter where you are or what you have, okay? So some things you might wanna start collecting. Chopsticks. If you get some sushi, take out chopsticks, okay? We can do different techniques with these. We can also build with them. Yarn, variety of things we can do. Weaving, um, you can also make yarn drawings with them. You can also use yarn to hang up your artwork in your room. Lots of things we can do with yarn. Toilet paper tubes. Um, you can rip off all the toilet paper off of a tube, draw on it, and then you have a little piece of artwork that stands up. Or you can also dip the um, toilet paper tube into paint and make consecutive circles, okay? Um, pipe cleaners, so many things we can do with pipe cleaners. Um, kindergarten, um, you'll find that you might have pipe cleaners in your kit. It depends on when I have you during the school year. And um, pipe cleaners are fun because you can bend them into different shapes and, and different types of lines. Okay, um, Q-tips, okay, you can do something called pointillism with Q-tips, you can also paint with them, you can also do blending with them, um, colored pencils, crayons, markers, buttons, oh so fun to work with, so many things we can do with buttons blocks we can do print making with blocks by dipping them into paint we can also paint blocks and make artwork 
and then you can actually paint different things on the blocks and stack the blocks so they become a couple of pieces of artwork that are stacked. Super fun. Um, believe it or not, old toothbrushes because you can use these with watercolor. You can dip them in the watercolor and you can go like this and you get a splatter effect. Um, I also want you to start collecting things that inspire you, okay? So I got this snail shell in the Dominican Republic. Spirals really inspire me. I've been starting to incorporate spirals into my work in various ways. Um, I found this heart up on our property in the mount mountains. It's rose quartz, but it looks like a heart and I just thought it was really sweet. Uh, toothpicks. We can do art techniques with toothpicks. We can do scratch art with toothpicks. So many things we can do with toothpicks, but also be careful because they do have sharp tips. Okay. Um, some other things. Caps of markers. We can use those for texturing. We can use them with the Model Magic. Um, if you ever go get a pedicure, okay, we can actually use these as a texture tool with paint. You can also use a comb as a texture tool with paint. Um, last year, a kid gave me Skittles. Love Skittles, taste the rainbow. And it came in a heart like this, and now I can actually dip these in paint or paint the edges and then make heart prints over and over again, okay? Um, another thing I can do is I can cut them, or uh, cut clay, almost like a cookie cutter with these. Like I said, marker caps, great for texturing. Pool noodle, you get these at the dollar store, cut them up, dip them in paint, print making, okay? All right, lots of things we can do with random ob objects. I would start saving anything that you think you could make art with, okay? Um, oh, another thing, paper bags. We can paint these and cut stuff out and make collage. That's what Eric Carl, the author and illustrator, did to make his collages for his very famous children's books. And if you're not sure who I'm talking about, he wrote the book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, okay? And everyone knows that book, okay? And if you don't, I will read it to you at some point, okay? Um, all right, so my folks, I, um, I think I'm done here. If you have questions, feel free to ask. But your first assignment is actually going to be to put your own art kit together, okay? Now, I know this is not an art making assignment, but this is an art collecting assignment, okay? So um, I know you're up for the challenge. I can't wait to see what you guys put in your kits, okay? To turn in this assignment, what you're going to do is collect stuff for your kit, snap a picture, and turn it in, okay? That's how you're gonna turn in your first assignment. All right, good luck, beautiful people. I will see you again online very soon.